Next, I would like to introduce Daniel Stockel Ben Ezra. He's a professor at the Ecole Pratique des Hautes Etudes in Paris. Uh, they have a really massive group of people there working on scripts and digital paleography. It's a really happening place. And Daniel Stockel Ben Ezra is at the center of all of it. So I'm not sure exactly what he's going to be presenting on, uh, presumably the e-script or e-scriptorium. Um, but whatever it is, it will be very exciting. They're very much at the cutting edge though. So Daniel, uh, go ahead, take it away. Thank you very much, Drew. And it's a pleasure to be here, even though only virtually, and I would have largely preferred a beer in Groningen, I can believe. <clears throat> um, so I'll talk about uh, the platform uh, that we are constructing in Paris and its application to the Qumran scrolls in a collaboration with SQE project. Uh, which has just been presented by Bronson and which uh, Nahum will continue tomorrow. Um, so uh, you can watch uh, the other presentations that are more geared towards the general presentation of the platform online. There are a couple of we have given in recent uh, months. It's very collaborative work together with Peter who's took to the slogan, so he's here, he's gonna speak tomorrow, I believe. And Mark Bree and our really genius uh, engineers, uh, who are uh, probably the most important part of the whole project. And Lucky is the team that manages to get good engineers. So our code is open source. Um, uh, the UI code as well as the AI code, uh, with the links given here. And don't worry, they'll be back at the end of the presentation. And there's a blog which gives some news, though we don't have anybody who is really responsible for the blog. So sometimes we need a couple of months to give extras. The funding is given here, and I will not go into that. Uh, uh, just very briefly show our universe that has been created now uh, of very many Paris institutions, which are on the left side. And uh, on the right side, uh, several international projects. Uh, most noteworthy is the Open ITI collaboration and Mellon funded project with Northeastern and the University of Maryland. Uh, and uh, uh, the boxes show the different clusters that are now working. So the high performance computation uh, institutions that have been uh, funded. Uh, one big one in Paris is Manuscriptologia. Uh, a second Large one is Crema, a one in America is Symorg, and a, a fourth one in, in, in Geneva is just about to start. Um, now, what we currently offer is the import of uh, images or transcriptions that exist already via different protocols mentioned here, and an ergonomic UI for manual interaction with the object. So segmentation, meaning layout analysis, transcription, and four panels uh, that deal with uh, one and the, the image presentation as a facsimile, the segmentation annotation, the transcription and text annotation, which will soon be much deeper than it is now. So just to give you an idea about what is going here, there on there, do you see uh, an Arabic manuscript and the four different panels. And uh, you can see that the uh, lines are automatically rotated so you can interact with this very complex layout very easily. Uh, you can zoom in and the transcription is twinned so you can always see whatever you are interacting with. So also for very big uh, geographical maps or things that don't match well our screens even big screens at home, uh, this uh, is, is really very comfortable and has been very nicely done by uh, uh, our engineer, Robin. And uh, here you can see the same with the Qumran fragment, which uh, unfortunately has been put into the IIIF server, turned around and rotated. So you, you can rotate it. I will not present it here. You can show the, the line numbers. You can uh, then uh, add a, a, a regular text interface on the right side for the annotation. And uh, if you click on a, in a, on a line, you can zoom uh, just as we saw before. If you click on the line, it will be rotated. And if you click on this mask button, you can either 
visualize the polygon around the lines which have been calculated automatically uh, or now visualize again the line. So for any work with fragmentary material that doesn't need to be puzzled. So I, I, I mean, I wouldn't do a restitution of a Kumran scroll inside here, but for fragments that can stay alone, uh, this is really very comfortable. Um, so the, here, uh, this shows very quickly uh, how the transcription is going on. So on, on the big server, so you can see uh, it really goes like a fly now. Uh, we still need some steps to master the very big cluster. Uh, so we hope to be able to offer the services in next month. And uh, so besides automatic segmentation, an automatic transcription. There's obviously also the export to interact with other tools uh, to different formats, which you can see here. Uh, the segmentation and the transcription is similar to the techniques that Mahuf showed uh, of binarization based on complex architectures of uh, uh, C convolutional neural networks and uh, bi LSTM, so uh, bi directional long short term uh, memory. And neural networks and uh, uh, yeah, this is not the forum to go into detail on that in a quarter of an hour. So let's present quickly here one fragment from PORQ 393, the process. So we already have a trained segmentation model and a trained a transcription model and we're gonna just apply it to this fragment and wait a couple of seconds until we get a result. And you can imagine that transcription for uh, such a fragmentary material will be really, uh, I mean, I wouldn't publish it, uh, but it's useful for other ways, which I'll present in a minute. For medieval manuscripts, however, it's, it's really nice. So here you can see the computer has already transcribed four uh, images, uh, four, four lines, six lines, and now the whole thing. And uh, you can make, you can see it makes some sense. So it, this should be about 75, 80% uh, correct. Um, and now what we want to do for SQE and the collaboration is the alignment of the whole, uh, of all manuscripts uh, fragments uh, of at least this uh, lim uh, a minimum amount of characters uh, with the, um, the regions of interest. So with the character locations on uh, the images. So the first step is the baseline segmentation, uh, where, well, which I already briefly explained. The second one is the polygon extraction around the characters. Um, and the third one then is an, an uh, very rough OCR. It doesn't need to be really precise, but enables us to um, uh, overcome the huge problem that exists. And Bronson has been dealt, dealing with this for the last couple of years, that these fragments move. I mean, you have fragments splitting up. You have uh, fragments that are, in fact, several fragments that were put together. What one person calls a fragment, another person calls four fragments, and vice versa. And the, so it's very difficult to know what exactly is on which image. And this rough transcription already gives us an idea what we have uh, there. Uh, so for example, here we have a challenge that this is only uh, fragment A of uh, the first fragment of 4Q436. And you see on the top uh, level, the uh, transcription that is on this fragment and on the bottom, which is the one that is in our database where the transition between both fragments is not clearly indicated. Now, uh, we then make a forced alignment of the uh, SQE contents of the transcription with uh, the uh, lines on the fragment. And we can get to very precise or quite precise locations on the word level and uh, relatively precise ones uh, on the character level. So this is the most recent state of the code, which you can see here. So on a word level, it's pretty good. And if I switch to the character level, uh, uh, it is workable. It is by far not as precise as a human being, but uh, one can extrapolate further things knowing the script. And this code has been 
uh, created through a close collaboration with the uh, small enterprise Ticlia, uh, with which we are for which we are really grateful. Uh, you, you can see a little bit closer uh, the uh, overlay of the uh, supposed character locations that were automatically detected. Now, obviously, afterwards, you, so here you can see some extractions as examples uh, for some characters, and then you can go to binarization uh, and create the heat maps uh, uh, like this one here, or for an I'm here for a certain group of uh, uh, letters. And uh, beyond Qumran, so the, the, the platform has had no intention to, to be used for Qumran. So the uh, platform can deal with any script that is uh, sequential. So we have just been received funding for collaboration with Princeton University uh, for uh, documentary text from the uh, Cairo Geniza. And uh, you can also do um, classical editions of rabbinic texts and the segmentation uh, gives you the possibility to distinguish between uh, different kinds of apparatus and, and the running header and so on. Um, or with medieval manuscripts in order to distinguish uh, main text and the il uh, illuminations in there. You can see from another project, uh, typical segmentation result of interlinear and uh, marginal additions to uh, a Tanaitic treatise. And uh, you can export these as altos and then integrate them into a regular Mirador viewer. And uh, I'll just show that very quickly. It's very easy. Uh, so here you can see our Munich Mechilda. Uh, let's get rid of the modern book there and uh, create an overlay of the transcription. There's still some small mistakes for the right to left issues, but uh, Johannes Breiter from the Munich State Library has really done a great job to be able to in include these alto transcriptions directly into the uh, Mirador and in the, in the, to do the triple IF manifests. Now, I will not go into the details of the future. Uh, you can look them up of, on the internet, but we have also worked on Syriac, for example. Uh, so this is completely automatic alignment uh, or on uh, papyri. And uh, let me finish here with the Vietnamese project uh, for which Mark Bree is uh, co-responsible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. It's exciting to see what's going on there. You guys are making some great progress and some very challenging issues, especially when you start dealing with those fragments. So it's nice to see good work being done and we wish you guys the best for that as well.